But people would be, I think, very surprised to know how nervous you feel about this because you literally didn't sleep properly last no, night. No, I didn't sleep last night. I'm on the edge of my chair and I'm clutching my hands. Why? What is it that makes you nervous about it? <laughs> Is it uh, being out of control? Yes, I'm not in charge <laughs> of it, basically. I mean, when I did my one-woman show, I, I, it, I started off and I wasn't very, very good, but I got good at the show and I got loads of confidence. But I'm not... I, I'm very anxious at the minute. Oh, don't be, Janet. Honestly, you're going to love it. Let's take you back, then, uh, to 1946, a year after the end of World War II, two days after Christmas, and uh, your parents, Sherry and Stan, welcome baby Janet Bull. Little that was your Fiora Lynn voice, yes. wasn't it? I was doing that. Did you like that? It was almost yeah, like okay, we've gone into black and white, taking <laughs> yeah, the coping, back. not coping, <laughs> coping and not coping. <laughs> um, so, bought, you were born in Brentford and then moved eventually to Fulham, which is where you kind of had all your teenage years. Yeah, we. Um, my dad, my mum and dad didn't have much money, um, and somebody in my dad's family uh, gave them uh, a house. Uh, which was a terrace house, and we only had half the house. <laughs> so a bus conductor and his family lived upstairs, and we had the ground floor and a bit of the, uh, 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 the landing at the back. And if I wanted to go to the loo in the night, I had to go down the stairs, out through the kitchen, past the scullery, out into the back garden to the outside toilet. That was the first scarring experience of my life. <laughs> and we could only have a bath on Sundays. Yeah. So, I, oh, sorry. No, no, carry on. I know that you're, you... you you, it's kind of well documented you didn't particularly get on with your mum, Cherry, but what, what was your relationship with your dad like? Uh, my dad and I got on pretty well till I was about 11 or 12. I mean, basically, my dad wanted a boy and he got me. So he would take me to Speedway. Uh, we go Speedway racing at Wimbledon. We go to football at Fulham. I go on the terraces with him. Those were in the days when Fulham football team was in the first division. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't <laughs> laugh. Uh, it's been up and down ever since. Um, and my dad gave me things like Meccano and uh, Hornby Dublo trains for Christmas, and that was great. I was going to say, I'd imagine you'd love all that. I couldn't imagine yeah. you with my dollies and My mum gave me teddies. a dolly, but I ripped the arms off. <laughs> was, he quite, was he quite strict? Because that generation could be, couldn't they? <laughs> my dad was a really um, not very emotional man, and uh, our house had loads and loads and loads of rules. We had rules about not talking at mealtime, eating everything on the plate, my mum had to wear a clean penny for dinner. Oh, my goodness, it was dreadful. And if we were ever travelling anywhere, we had to pack our suitcases the night before, get them lined up in the hall and then leave at 5am <laughs> so we could stop in a lay-by on the A1 and, and my dad could brew up a cup of tea. God forbid we ever went but in the you, cafe So that's like where the rebellion came from. Yeah, I was going to say, from. knowing how rebellious you, <clears throat> rebellious you are, did, did you rebel then? Did you argue with your dad? Yeah, but then you got a whack around the head with a hairbrush. So, um, yes, I, I disagreed with about 99% of everything my parents said. And I, in, in actual fact, they didn't get on particularly well either. So, uh, there were some epic rows, like the, uh, the Christmas my dad brought a goose home at the last minute. He went out for a bargain turkey, came back late on Christmas Eve with a goose with all the feathers on, and my mother hit him round the head with it. <laughs> Oh, he <coughs> was sent to bed early. So it was quite a tempestuous house. Yes, Denise. I was going to ask, because as someone who had a very loving relationship with parents, I always feel a bit sad when I've heard you say that you didn't like your parents. <coughs> but what you've described there, do you think it was just a generational thing in upbringing? Have you, have you found a forgiveness in your life for them? And do you think that because you were slightly a troublesome child, that maybe that, <laughs> that was something to do with the way that they were. Um, have I found forgiveness? Um, well, I, my mother was a complete mystery to me. I mean, in fact, my mum and dad weren't married and didn't get married uh, until I was about seven or eight, and there were no wedding photos in our house. Um, and I, I felt very out of place in a weird way. I can't kind of put my finger on it. But there was obviously tension between them. My mother had was married to somebody else when they met, and I've only found out recently that my father was married too, which I still, you oh. know, at this moment, I still find quite perplexing. So there were a lot of um, secret lives going on. Um, but do you not think that was a generational thing, that that probably maybe. was happening in a lot... You know, people were much more private, because you said they didn't really talk about... 
Well, Things my mother and was very, very close to her Welsh family, and she uh, she left Wales to come and live in London with my dad. And she missed Wales so much that she brought my lovely auntie Vi, who I still see, who's in her eighties now, to live next door to us. So my mother and auntie Vi could talk Welsh all the time. And then they got the budgie, Nikki, also <laughs> taught it well. <laughs> so it was a bit of a bilingual household. <laughs> and my mother would literally roam West London looking for people who are Welsh to talk to <laughs> and shopping in Welsh dairies, because there were. And you had a, a sister as well, Pat, a younger yeah. sister. What was your relationship like with her? Well, we didn't get on because she was born. I mean, when you're the <laughs> oldest child and another one comes along, it's outrageous. You've got to share your bedroom. And I drew a line down the bedroom and said she couldn't cross it. But... Um, we did. My sister and I got on fine as we got older, but it's true to say we didn't have a lot in common. She had nice, dark brown, curly hair. I had that beige hair that just, like, lies flat. Oh, look at you. <laughs> yeah, that's a rare picture of us smiling. So you grew up in Fulham, the pair of you, and then when you were about, what, 14 and she was about 12, your parents up sticks out to sort yeah, of suburbia. typical, right? My dad just said to us at tea time, we're moving on Tuesday, not let's involve everyone in the family in this joint piece of epic decision-making. No, we're going to Perryvale in suburbia. And we lived in inner London. It was fantastic. I could walk to school. My sister's school was down the road. I used to love everything about living in Fulham. Suddenly, I got to go and live in suburbia yeah. and take a great long train journey. Why he didn't ask you? They didn't ask us, no. And what about... Oh, no, you... I was going to say, because if he'd suggested it, no doubt you would have said not in a million years. So exactly, that's why Denise. I would you. have said, rent me a room <laughs> and I'll stay in Fulham. So when... what was it like turning up at a new school in Perivale, being you? Oh, no, I didn't... I changed, I, did, I stayed in grammar school in Fulham. I was by then in uh, Lady Margaret. So uh, was school a good experience? I, uh, I liked school academically, it was a really, it still is a really, really good school. And I've done various things for it over the years because it's a school, a girls' school, Church of England school, and it really encourages you to stretch your boundaries and, and tells it, you that you can achieve. On the downside, just like living at home, loads of rules. Yeah, did you break them much? Yeah, I was in trouble a lot. I didn't even ever make it to being a prefect. I think monitor was the highest. <laughs> but you did, highest but you did milk do, monitor. Yeah, but academically, <laughs> you did really well. 11 O levels, four A levels. So you were a really academic child. I think I got three A levels in the end. Uh, but it, um, I took loads of exams. It's right, because I was very, very ambitious. And I think my father had started out as an electrician and then he'd gone to night school to become an electrical engineer. And they were thrilled I went to grammar school. And so I did loads and loads of work. I went to exhibitions, I kept notebooks and diaries because I wanted to study architecture and no one from my school had ever done that. And certainly no one from my family had even left school after 14. So I was a bit, bit of a trail. Were you 40? Because I could see you as a goalkeeper in the yeah. netball team. Don't I was think? in all the school teams because yeah. I was the tallest girl. I was more of a psychological deterrent <laughs> than anything else. Because quite frankly, <laughs> at netball, I'd go like that and my bra would ping up and really <laughs> strangle me. I was so flat chested. Well, there you are, 17 years old. Oh, competitive. That's the competitive Janet Bull. Um, but, and you did go on to, to, you know, train to be an architect. And so I read there, was it five... Five women, 95 men. Oh, yeah, so well, I hit much... the jackpot there, yeah. day one. <laughs> I went... Because I went getting into college required passing an entrance exam, producing a portfolio of work, then you had the interview. So it was quite a gruelling process. And uh, when I arrived on the first day, all I could see were... Men, boys. Yeah. And most of them came from public school and they couldn't even boil an egg. And I immediately made a close circle of friends that I still... Yes. And one of which, because yeah. we've talked about Janet Bull, so a lot of people will be thinking, where's the street porter come from? Tell us. Well, when I started at college, I was engaged uh, to an architect um, called Rex, and then within six months, I'd met Tim Street Porter, who suggested that I dump Rex, so I cancelled my <laughs> wedding. <laughs> 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 and uh, cancelled my wedding, ended my engagement, and um, 
a year or so later, I married Tim. And you're only 20. That's young. Yeah. Now that days, that's young. Yeah, and my mum and dad didn't meet his parents till two weeks before Look at the that wedding. dress. Yeah. Oh, that's a, wow. I had the dress made by Ozzy Clark. Wow. It's a bit of a clown's outfit, though, let's be honest. Have you still got that? Because like... I know you keep a lot of your clothes, don't you? No. No? That was a cross between a shop assistant's overall and a clown's outfit. So, so Tim Street Porter mm. from fairly middle class... Well, he or... were, had trained as an architect, but he was an architectural yeah. photographer. So a how very, did the very two good... families gel on the wedding day? Oh, well, it was really funny because in the months before, when I was living, because I ran away from home, then and moved in with Tim. And when I did that, my mum and dad came round to try and take me back and I wouldn't go. And then um, they were really angry when I said I was going to marry Tim Street Porter. I just rang them up and told them. And I went, well, why don't you meet the parents? And of course, they lived in a very nice house with a blue plaque on the front. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, my mum and dad went from, this is the worst thing in our, that's ever happened in our lives, to, oh, our daughter's doing a bit of social climbing. <laughs>